All right, first and foremost, we give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Back at y'all with another Friday night class. Um, I mean, somebody meet Luke 21 and 11. I mean, obviously, the hot topic of what's going on right now is what's happening to the 12 tribes of Israel in the Americas, all right? That's that's the primary topic. That's what needs to be principally discussed amongst the nation right now is what's happening to the 12 tribes of Israel, all right? I don't care what's happening to the white man or anybody else. What's important is what's happening to the 12 tribes of Israel. You deal with Hurricane Harvey that just hit the Houston area. The people who were affected the worst were blacks and Latino people. Okay, Latinos live in the closest proximity to the power plants. Whereas we're just talking about this flesh-eating, diseased water that was spreading because of all the chemicals from the power plants. In addition to that, the least amount of aid is being administered to the African American community, so African American or Black communities, tribe of Judah communities in Houston. So they didn't get the worst of the actual floods, but they haven't gotten any help at all. You understand what I'm saying? So we have that as far as Hurricane Harvey goes. Now we have Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Irma has decimated 90% of Barbuda. A lot of people don't know about the island of Barbuda. It's a Benjamite island in the Caribbean. All right? 90% of all buildings and structures on that island are destroyed from Hurricane Irma. The Bahamas is getting wrecked by Hurricane Irma. You understand what I'm saying? Puerto Rico is getting wrecked. By Hurricane Irma, and right now it's caused Florida to do the largest evacuation. 2.5 million people had to evacuate out of South and Central Florida because of Irma. Okay, who predominantly lives in South and Central Florida? Israelites, Haitians, uh, Judites, Benjamites, Ephraimites, Simeonites, uh, uh, Manassite. That's who's the primary people who live in, in, in that area. All right, mm -hmm. our people. And also, let's not forget, of course, the Reubenites, the Seminole Indians. That is their land, mm -hmm. right? So, so the tribes are being affected. Okay. In addition to that, last night, uh, eight point what was it eight point five? Eight point oh. Eight point one earthquake. Which that's not a joke. A six. When did you get to six seven? It's not a joke. Eight. And all I was thinking about was tsunami. That's what come after a large earthquake. Is a tsunami. I, I don't know if the tsunami warning is still in effect. Uh, I know I it was, was in effect last night. <laughs> I was at the beach today. I would be gone. <laughs> you know, but but uh, it's this is a big deal. Um, yeah, the next strongest earthquake in centuries. In centuries, eight point one. It was it was right there on the border of Issachar and Zebulon. Yeah, right there in southern Mexico. In Oaxaca, that's where it was. It was right around Oaxaca. You see what I'm saying? On top of all of that, you now have have uh, Zebulon and Issachar being drugged. So now we got now. Let's go back over it. Judah, Issachar, uh, Zebulon, uh, Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Benjamin, and Reuben. You see what I'm saying? That's nine tribes that in the last week have been going through quote unquote natural disaster hell. All right. And this is just a preview. Luke 21 11, somebody. God. Book of Luke. Uh huh. Chapter 21, verse 11. Read. And great earthquakes. Uh huh. Great earthquakes. You see that? We're talking about the storms. Well, why there's a damn storm going on destroying the Caribbean, rapidly approaching Florida. Here comes an earthquake on the border of Mexico and, and Guatemala, where the Bible talks about in uh, Genesis 49. It says, to you, that border shall be the Zidon. Right in that area where the Zidonians used to inhabit, that the tribe of Issachar and Zebulon now inhabit, that earthquake hit. Read. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Uh huh. And famines. Uh huh. And pestilences. Because guess what happens when that great storm comes in? Now you have an issue getting food. Now you have disease that gets bred in these waters. And pestilence, read and fearful sight. And it's a, and it's a fearful sight. How do you think them, them brothers and sisters down in Barbuda feel when they come out their damn basement and they see they're in 
entire island in ruins. The whole thing is in ruins. 90% of all structures destroyed on this island. Read. And great signs shall there be from heaven. You see, and what? Great signs shall there be from heaven. It all started with the eclipse. There was an eclipse, and then after this eclipse, all of a sudden, hell started. There, there's going to be an eclipse, and hell should start. <laughs> hell started after that eclipse. And that moon too. Then it was a blood moon last week. A lot of people didn't see last Tuesday. It was a blood moon. The moon stayed full, damn, two, three days. Some people taking pictures. You see what I'm saying? And it was what? It was a blood moon out there. The Most High God is showing them signs. We've been saying since the beginning of the year. That 2017 was going to be a year of judgment. Right. We've been saying this since the beginning of the year. This was going to be a year of judgment. The water. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And that's exactly what this has been. A year of judgment. You know, all kind of people dropping dead, getting murdered. And now the natural disasters are occurring. In a row, three in a row, three letters in a row, hurricanes. H-I-J, uh, uh, Harvey, Irma, and Jose coming right behind Irma. It all started with the eclipse. All right. The Most High shows signs in the heavens. All right. And that sign signifies things, that things are getting ready to happen. And then he gave us a second sign through that blood moon. That was it on that? Con. Give me a Genesis 1 and 14. Con. Book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. And the Most High said, let there be lights in the firmament. So there's lights up there in that sky. Read on. Of the heaven uh -huh. to divide the day. Uh -huh. Divide the day for the night. Read on. And let them be for signs. What? For signs. So the lights in the heavens are for signs. The sun is for a sign. The stars are for a sign. The moon is for a sign. All right? So when we saw... That solar eclipse, mm -hmm. that was a sign. Mm -hmm. When we saw that blood moon just this past Tuesday, mm -hmm. that was a sign. How do we know that that was a sign? Because we see what has rolled out since then. Two hurricanes getting ready to go on the third one. We still ain't out the second one yet. A horrific earthquake. Seismic activity on the eighth scale on the Richter scale. That's major. Let's not talk about the hundreds of fires there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I keep forgetting about these fires. Forgetting about these fires. California's on fire. Montana's on fire. Oregon is on fire. Seattle. Washington is Washington. on fire. I'm sorry, Washington. Half the West Coast is in blaze, a blaze right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Karam, you had something? Fire. Fires going around. I keep forgetting about these damn fires. Largest right? Fire Largest fire in LA history. I heard it was a damn, they had downtown LA, and then you just see, you see that? That's the white man getting judged there. I'm happy for that. Fires blaze, that kills white people. So that's beautiful when you see a California wildfire up in the Hollywood Hills somewhere. Craig is living all up in them damn hills getting burnt burnt up. You understand what I'm saying? Negro want to live there. You're going to get burnt up with them Craig. Them wildfires, they happen every year. Right? So read. Yeah, 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 you man, you know. He's, he's been left L.A., though. He, he's out of L.A. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and let, and let them be for signs uh -huh. and for seasons and for seasons and okay. for days and years. So this is a sign. That's a sign that's happening. All right. Give me Amos three and sixteen. Con. There's a lot of controversy. Some people, a lot of people, saying it's the harp. You understand what I'm saying? Some people blaming this thing, blaming that thing for what's going on. At the end of the day, the judgment of the Most High is what is going on. All right, on the 12 tribes who are busy worshiping a white Jesus or worshiping some womb or worshiping some nonsense, the Most High is bringing judgment on the 12 tribes right now. Read. And there's no uh, bomb or saving it because you were talking about the insurance. The yeah, the, the flood insurance, they're getting ready to do away. There's not even going to be no such thing as flood insurance. And the majority of people don't even have it anyway. People are good, are, are literally coming home, seeing their home and going, 
ain't even nothing I can do. We're going to let this go. The bank is going to snatch that property up, resell it at a marked up price, and try to get blacks and Hispanic people out of, 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 of Houston. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead. And this is what I said. I remember I was out there in Florida this uh, past January. All right. Uh, for the summit. We had a summit out there in Florida. I was out there in Florida. And I said, um, what I say? I said, man, I love Florida and I would move to Florida, except for the fact that y'all got to deal with hurricane. All right. And you know what all the brothers told me? I mean, come on. He said, ne they never really do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Irma's looking like that's different. <laughs> yeah, I'll stay, I'll stay right here. Go ahead. Man, I got a preview. Remember, so just oh, yeah. Like story, a a tropical two, storm though. happened when the brother's brother was just out in Florida in July. You see what I'm saying? But go ahead. Oh, uh, you want 15 cents. Three and six, my fault. The Amos chapter three, verse six. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Uh -huh. Shall there be evil in a city uh -huh. and the most high have not done it? These earthquakes, these wildfires, these hurricanes are evil in the cities that they strike it. That's what they are. They are evil. They are devastation. <laughs> they are destruction. The most high is doing that. Right. I don't care if you want to say it's man-made. I don't care if you say it's a natural disaster. Whatever you want to call it, the most high ultimately is orchestrating this as an instrument of judgment on the 12 tribes of Israel. All right? Because the 12 tribes of Israel are still living wicked as hell. All right? So the 12 tribes of Israel need to wake up. So these are the various wake-up calls that are sent to the 12 tribes. All right, go ahead. Or is that it on that? Oh, that's it. Give me, go ahead. Even if it is hard. Proverbs 20 and 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. And a man then understand his own ways. So even if it is hard, the scriptures say man's goings is of the Lord, just like the missiles. We know the missiles are the most highs. Uh, a mechanism to destroy Babylon and destroy most parts of the world. That's right. He's not the one actually shooting them, but he put he created the Smith Isaiah fifty six and ten. He created the Smith uh, 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 to create these weapons of mass destruction. You see what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. This is a he, uh, he created evil for the uh, dead. Judgment. That's right. So it's the judgment that's going on. That's all this is. Is why the areas that are being affected the most are where our people are at. You see what I'm saying? I guarantee you that that thing is slowing down now. It's going to pass, which is still going to jack Florida up because of how many of our people are in Florida. Don't get it twisted. But it's going to slow down a little bit now in Florida. You see what I'm saying? It was He was hot. Destroy Barbuda. Hot going into Puerto Rico. Hot going into the Bahamas. It's going to slow down a little bit going into Florida. But please believe our people in Florida is going to get punished while they evacuate. Mass numbers going up all into Georgia and whatnot. Okay, but this is the judgment of the Lord, this hardship. And if you would simply repent as a black, Hispanic, and Native Indian, if you would simply would stop sinning and stop worshiping Caesar Bogier, you wouldn't be in this predicament. It's literally that simple. All right, we listen. I know brothers in Houston. All right, I know a brother in Houston right now. Hurricane Harvey came, every neighborhood around him was flooded, but his house was not flooded. This brother watched a tornado form and then deform in Hurricane Harvey, right? Everybody around him was messed up, but the area in which he lived, and not when I say area, not like a few miles stretch here. We talking about, he said the next neighborhood was underwater. The other neighborhood was underwater, right? But his wasn't. That's why we say if you would just simply repent and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments, you would be all right. Israel doesn't want to do that. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians would rather get rocked with 8.0 earthquakes and Category 5 hurricanes. And, and to, just to, so they could keep loving white Jesus. That's how much he means to them. Right? That they're going to keep getting him tattooed on them. They're going to keep buying his damn candles. And they're going to keep going to his church every Sunday. All to be destroyed by natural disasters. Meanwhile, when you serve the only living God, and you come to his law, statutes, and commandments, you're protected from all of these things. I mean, it's insanity. Let's go Deuteronomy uh, 33 and 12 for the tribe of Benjamin. 
Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 12. Mm -hmm. So the Most High alone did lead him, and there was no strange power with him. Where you at? Me too. I, I need 33. It's a lot. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 12. Uh -huh. And of Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Most High shall dwell in safety by him. Read it again. Said, the beloved of the Most High in safety by him. So this is Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin shall dwell in safety. The tribe of Benjamin islands that white people from all around the world come and vacation in. They got all these islands that are in, that are much safer places than Puerto Rico is, than Haiti is, than the Dominican Republic is, than Cuba is. But we're all right next to each other, right? The Most High has given the tribe of Benjamin a certain amount of safety, which is why he has the most desirable vacation destinations. Paradise on the damn earth is the damn Atlantis Resort. <laughs> they got it, Paradise Island. Is that not what it's called? Out, put his brother work there. All right. Paradise Island, all right, but the most hot have been and had enough, okay, with you worshiping Haley Selassie, okay? He's had enough with the tribe of Benjamin going off in all these various churches. I was just talking to a sister in Jamaica. She's telling me about this Jamaican mega church with a damn ATM in it. Where I said, damn, they got the ATM mm -hmm. in the church in Jamaica? I didn't even know they had the, the, the technology is, is, is going down like that. They got the uh, in the mega church. You understand what I'm saying? She said, you got to pay to get into this church. It's so damn bad. Right? And that's why, and that's happening all around the Benjamin Islands, and that's why they're being plagued with Hurricane Irma and Jose is on the way. That's why. It's it's actually that simple. The reason why is because you refuse to serve the most high officer. Jose? No, Hurricane Jose is going to be in the Caribbean, so it's going to come up into the Gulf of Mexico. Because the, the, the uh, somebody who I just talked to is in Barbados, and she said that um, that Irma's missing Barbados. She said, but but Jose is looking like it's gonna go through Barbados. You see what I'm saying? So it's gonna be bad. Uh, now what? Now Israel? Now what? Now what do we do? You see what I'm saying? It's it's actually simple. You just stop worshiping all these idols. You just start keeping the law that you command. You just start doing what the Most High is pleased with. And it's literally that simple. Okay? And you'll get deliverance. But our people want to be so damn wicked, and then they wonder why they get devastated with these types of events. You got a precept? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, second Ezra 15 and 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. So, like the brother's saying, you know, you repent, you come back to the law of statutes and commandments, you're going to be the ones that come out of the Egypt, spiritual Egypt, and Ezra's is speaking on, because this ain't the ancient Egypt. All right, it says, uh, and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof, meaning America's going to be totally destroyed by natural disaster, by fires, and ultimately by thermonuclear destruction. That's right. It says, uh, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and the punishment that God shall bring upon it. So we know this is God's judgment. Right? Verse 13. They that till the ground shall mourn. Meaning after people try to go back to their lands and, 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 and their domains and their farmlands after these hurricanes, it's going to be a hard time uh, uh, growing up the agriculture, agriculture business. All right. So it says. Uh, For their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail and with the fearful constellation talking about these storms. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction draw of nigh and one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands. Because there's martial law going on in these places that that this uh, uh, this devastation is happening. There's martial law going on. There's roadblocks. Uh, there's quarantine cities. Like the brother said, there's poison in the water. So they go and try to quarantine the cities. You have something to say? Curfew. That's martial law. Um, it says uh, um, verse 16. 
for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another because now they're looting houses they're looting businesses that's invading one another all right it says uh they shall not regard their kings nor princes because the police can't stop the shit. and the course of their actions shall stand in their power meaning if you got a hundred thousand hungry people looting and invading houses they're going to prevail because they're going to overpower the police it is not there's not an amount of police or national guard or it, what's going to happen is the police and the national guard is going to get there and they just going to leave they're not even going to deal with that angry mob because they know they don't have the manpower to do so what is it supposed to be one cop for every 10 people or something like that come on if that so it says uh uh a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able so there's people who who want to go home they want to go home they, they, they're getting evacuated their their house is destroyed all their things are gone their goods are or are, 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 what's it what's it spoiled and they want to go home <laughs> i just want to go home right but the bible says a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able those are the quarantine cities those are the martial laws those are the roadblocks those are the evacuations all right that's uh uh, uh being impoverished meaning you're being displaced you have something to say out you see that you see that that's yeah see hey it, desiring to go within a city not even desiring to leave a city or to come back into city you got men desiring to go somewhere within a city and because of the martial law troops or or, or or the national guard or pretty soon they'll probably have un troops here which I already seen you in trucks uh, um, on the internet so they're here uh, what's up I Trying to help the police Yeah, yeah. Because they want they want this to happen. They want what's on the dollar bill? Order out of what? Chaos. Order out of chaos. This is how the white man gets order out of chaos. All right. Nigga, you got something to say? Yeah, I was gonna say. Come on, but this is how the white man gets order out of chaos. So when you see other Israelites trying to help Israelites, he doesn't want to see that. He can't help other Israelites. We want all hell to break loose. We want this madness to, 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 to continue to happen because that's how we get order. Um, all right, Arzan. Oh, I've seen a post where it says a uh, direct cross. They accumulated like already like 500 million. That's they don't even know where the money went. Right, right. That they're feeding um, police officers before uh, people yeah, in, yeah. Feeding, feeding police officers before civilians red cross man, like they billion. do like they do in every disaster yeah. nobody ever gets nobody who they ever send the money for the cause mm -hmm. ever gets it um Sorry. yeah my grandma told me years ago when she was in the in the army she was um Telling me how you know the types of things that she saw the Red Cross, which is why she would say she would never donate to the Red Cross because the types of things that she saw the Red Cross would do under the guise of we're a peacekeeping organization, we're a charitable organization, how they would cross enemy lines and the dirty things they would do. So the Red Cross is organization, and there are grassroots movements and groups and things like that in these areas who, if you did want to donate, you could donate to. And you know they would appropriate, you know, appropriately use the money that you give. But go ahead. Come on. Last verse, uh, verse eighteen. For because of their pride, mm -hmm. because America is going to get destroyed ultimately because of the white man. But two thirds is they're two, they're six six six. They might they're good as a damn white man because they've been given over to the image of the beast. They've been given over to American society and the, and white supremacy. Two thirds judgment and Esau's judgment, as far as the second death goes, is all that's all the same. That's mm -hmm. one and the same. It says, uh, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. I've seen a video 
Jakes was walking through the flood, and this nigga had, didn't have anything in his hand with his goddamn MCM backpack. Did you guys see that? Done. Done. Okay. Jake, Jake, he don't give a damn if he's gonna eat, if his house is okay. All he cares about is his damn MCM backpack. Like he's on some type of look. But guess what? Tyrone prepared for this. You know how? He was riding through in that box Chevy on third. <laughs> <laughs> you see that meme? Yeah. <laughs> it's like everybody laughed at Tyrone, but he knew all along. <laughs> <laughs> I got this nigga in a box Chevy on third. Just push it through the floor. Push it through the water. Hi, Zon, bring it out. Popping out this um, east off. He's getting out his sunroof. And, and Jake is going across the water, and it's up to his knee. Giving them his, his his Jordans, he's handing them his Jordans, so they won't get wet. When it's up to the knee, the water's up to the knee. <laughs> Jake is going across the water, and he's over there. He's going across with like a what is it like, a little boat, kayak or something. little kayak, yeah. so he won't get wet. Like, and then, this is exactly why I Christ said, "And grab shit." Don't grab nothing. Just go, flee, because this white man gonna kill you. All right, especially if the natural disaster don't. That's why the uh, Amos nine says, "He that fleeth from the the, the the bow is gonna get hit with the steel. He that fleeth from the pit is gonna get hit with the viathan." The, the Most High's judgment is on you. It's on you, Officer Bazaar. I just wanted to point out, uh, based off of uh, AccuWeather. You know, there's probably been at least maybe 20 people killed in the Caribbean so far, and that's that's pretty Which, much how it is. That's preliminary. Yeah, it, it, it's it's. And you have to understand being surrounded by water, and you have places like what uh, Japan or 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 these other like Guam and all those other things that come. get hit by earthquakes, and then they're 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 totally wiped out. But, you know. You're gonna have these low death tolls. Everything might be destroyed, but it'll yeah. still flourish. Yeah, like like, like like Barbuda, there was ninety percent of the buildings were destroyed, but there not a. I, I want to say like three or four, three or four deaths. You no. see what I'm saying? So that's 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 Benjamin Jordan's safety. Man. You see what I'm saying? You said what? Elderly people that died. Hey, turn the AC on. Yeah, probably they were. They, were, they were probably were elderly at that. It probably wasn't no young people. You see what I'm saying? But like the brothers going into the death tolls don't usually be high amongst Benjamin, which is why I say that Benjamin shall go safely. Um, hey, especially uh, when you look at World War One, no Benjamin. Like a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the troops. We always bring out that uh, it said that Jake wasn't really gonna die in World War One, okay. but ninety percent of them was Benjamins. We never bring that out. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. 90, like ninety percent of them was Benjamites. That's right. Part of prophecy. Right. It's all a part of prophecy. The Lord said, "Benjamin shall do a safely; shall put him between your shoulders." It don't say that about nobody else on the whole chart, so it makes sense that everybody else is going through a little bit worse, right? Um, Bion, you had something? No, I just wanted. Oh, everybody else, you had that was what you had. You had some up in the back. You see that? You see at the, the, that that at that moment, he was he was being taught a lesson. That's the damn problem. The nigga going and exhausting his resources to save some damn white man, black women and black children. You know what I mean? A fellow black man, Hispanic man. Instead, you're exhausting your resources to come in and, and save this Confederate white man. When Texas was not a part of the Confederacy, but, that, but, but you're repping the, the Confederate flag in Texas. You were not part of the Confederacy. You understand what I'm saying? Texas was like on its own thing. Number one, I want to. Did they even have Texas from? They probably had Texas from Mexico at this point, but 
Texas, I don't believe, was even a part of the Confederacy like that. So I don't even know why. I don't even understand the importance. I mean, it just represents the fact of, of the old South. You know, the old South, you know what I mean? So, I mean, the white man is a devil, but a Negro is wondering why he's getting plagued like this. That was a wake-up call. And instead of that man taking his wake-up call, he instead continued to bow himself to the white man. Get continued to get jacked up in the guy. I just got a question. Like, um, just the pleasures taking place and everything in Houston. You know, they built all the prisons out there and they put all the people out there now. When a natural disaster happens, do they evacuate the prisoners as well? Uh, no. Yeah, they had an article. Houston, prison in Houston, inmates are still in there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 matter of fact, we we seen that thing earlier with Irma hidden, and and the police in a in a specific county out there in Florida said, if anybody that they see in an evacuation center has a warrant, they're taking them directly to the county jail. Body with the warrant at the evacuation center. And they got the fake, and out there they got the facial recognition big. They just scan your face now. It's just like it's just like uh, the Batman movie. You know what I'm saying? You know, even might say, "Hey, man, those people have already made their decision." You know what I'm saying? They they they've used up all their their resources. They're criminals. You know what I'm saying? Why worry about them anymore? You know? Realize that half of us in there are no, for nothing. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, they don't care, man. You see what I'm saying? Because because the the inmates represent money. Every inmate is is a dollar sign. That's why they want. That's why they push legislation to get people locked up. Because the inmates are the dollar sign. You see what I'm saying? Now, with here here's what you notice. Now they're putting all this money into legalizing weed, right? Decriminalizing weed. Money. They put the money first into decriminalizing it before they put the, because it's a plan now. We're not gonna invest our money into the legal weed business until we can get it decriminalized now because we can't have these niggas in jail for this because we need to be able to do this without, you see what I'm saying? So now, we, that ain't even criminal. You see what I'm saying? You just, you know, that's a that's a misdemeanor offense, the guy. I think without the regret, I think you would call it like two pounds. You see what I'm saying, and and it's not, and it's not. Back then, you doing years. You see what I'm saying for that. Exactly. Now it's beneficial to them. It fits their agenda, so we can't keep locking people up for it. But until they can get it to fit their agenda, they're going to put you in jail. No problem, man. The, uh, these are all state regulations. The feds are still cracking down on these, uh, on these dudes. You know what I'm saying? Which, which shows that the, what Deacon was talking about, the order out of chaos, because even amongst themselves, they're not on the same page. You know, the fed are coming. You, you'll invest all of your money into a business. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you know, they got your weed store thinking you legal. California said it's legal. And then sure enough, it's, you know, some blue jackets come in there with the red letter. I mean, with the yellow letters. Mm -hmm. You with paperwork talking about. My relative just told me the other day that the feds ran into one of the spots she, um, her dude worked at and said, listen, everybody in here, buy as much weed as you possibly can right now because uh, we're about to serve them with papers that they cannot 
uh, sell weed as of immediately. So when the last person leaves right now, it's the last thing you guys, you know, the last person gonna be able to buy weed. And then I guess the next couple of days they was back open because they went, you know, went down to the state, got got another paper certifying them, and it's just a back and forth. So they doing it like that too. If you can go down to the state the same way the brothers was talking about. They come lock these brothers up, they are, are in cahoots, or you know, in the pocket with the bail bondsman people. They get some bread for what 24, 48 hours. Go put it into account. Let it, you know, give during a little bit of interest. What fifty fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars a piece is a hundred thousand dollars. They can go and make a couple couple grand. Or was the you know let it let it grow real quick. The bail bondsmen they'll get their money back, and then they're just gonna drop the case for you. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna give you opportunity and let you think you're gonna build a business. So you come down here and pay for all these licenses, all these certifications, and then I'm gonna have the feds run in there and serve you another paper. So now you gotta go back down to the state, and pay some more money. You know, and it's just a never ending cycle of you just having to come out your pocket. Yeah. And then with them saying that, okay, they legalized the weed, it's that the feds how they're hitting you is now, oh, you got this pipe right here busted. There's this leak right here. They send you through a whole series of auditing. Then you're, then you're out there. Oh, you're too close to the school. You're too close to this church. Right. Um, you feel me? That's a fine. That's a fine. 50,000 here, 50,000 there. Good. Well, don't you care about that? Uh, I have a little bit of um, um, we, we be incarcerated uh, most of the time in my life. Uh, Whatever the money that these uh, correction officers are making, which is just this is nothing because I'm able to buy cell phones uh, off these uh, correction officers. Yeah, well, that's, why they, that's why they do that. They do that because they're not making enough money. Uh, situations like uh, what you were saying about certain things being close. Um, as I used to live in, I used to live on market like uh, in Miami, there's a in Chavez, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Puerto Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right across the street, there's a pedophile. Uh, <laughs> that people live they're fresh out of jail they did the time and then mental the city was right what is that like a halfway house for halfway pedophiles house for nah. you know joe's in retire right market mark yeah okay wow and I brought his attention to the end when I first uh, found out about that and get the China team and said, if they did it first, the school had to move that to have all the right mm-hmm. statistics, statistics, state or whatever. It's painful for them to be there. You know, all the necessity that they get. But then look, when you're, you're, you're a convicted pedophile, but you're getting an SSI check. Your disability is the fact that you like little kids. That's the that's the crazy thing about it. All that so I Make no sense. Go ahead. Just to just to go off with the super law and what we're talking about. No one's busting the acres and acres and acres of growing that Esau is doing up north. In Humboldt. In Humboldt. Yeah, in Humboldt County. No one's stopping them. Yeah. No, no, one, no, one, no, one, no, one, no one even, no one even gives a damn. Ran off of that. The town is ran off of, off of the, the money that's generated from them growing up. So that's why they're not going to say nothing. Yeah, Esau has free reign up there. No one's stopping them. At all. So what does that show you? <laughs> that shows you what you need to know. You have something else? Yeah, that's just that's Marvel the King and and Cesar Chavez. It's the culmination of the two kingdoms. You know? Yeah, right? so they ain't gonna give a damn about this pedophile spot across the street. They hoping these kids get just one and hoping they smoke and they hoping they smoke weed. What I would you have? Ain't he'll talk about this on the street too? Yeah, uh, I need I need Isaiah twenty nine. Yeah. Isaiah 29. There's like three schools right in the second. Nah, that's it. 20, Isaiah 29, 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. 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 29, 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 1. Uh-huh. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwells. What is Ariel? What Ariel is. Read it again. Not the little mermaid. Who knows what area? Read it again. Woe to Ariel. Who is Ariel? 
No. Who is Ariel? Israel. Ariel is Israel. Ariel is the line of God in the Hebrew. Ariel is Israel. Read. To Ariel, the city where David dwelt. Uh huh. Add ye year to year, let them kill sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yet I will distress Ariel. The Lord is distressing Ariel right now. And there shall be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. Skip to six. Heaviness and sorrow was coming upon Ariel because of all of these disasters that strike in Ariel. Who is Ariel? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Read. Verse six. That shall be visited of the most high. This is what's most. happening. Harvey, Irma, Jose, the damn earthquakes, the wildfires that are affecting the Israelites. The Lord is visiting the Israelites. Read. With thunder uh -huh. and with earthquake. And with what? And with earthquake. And with earthquake. Read on. And great noise. Uh huh. With storm and tempest uh -huh. and flame of devouring fire. There's fires, there's storms, and there's earthquakes. Just like what's going on right now from, from America on down to Mexico on over to the Caribbean. Read it again. Thou shalt be visited. Of the most high of hosts with thunder. With what? With thunder. Go ahead. And with earthquake. And with earthquake. You just hit Mexico. Read on. And great noise. Uh huh. With storm That's and tempest. Irma. That's Harvey. That's Jose coming. Read on. And the flame of devouring fire. And that's these damn wildfires. That's what's coming to Ariel, who's Ariel the Israelites. All right. Go to 28. Go to the 28th chapter. Right there in Isaiah. Read 1 to 2 and 28. Book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 1. Uh -huh. Woe to the crown of pride. Woe to the crown of pride, read. To the drunkards of Ephraim. That's why that then just that, that hurricane is reaping havoc in Puerto Rico. Woe to the, uh, the crown of the pride of Ephraim. Right? Ephraim is getting they just do right now in judgment from the most side. Read on. Whose glorious beauty is a fading flower. Uh -huh, go ahead. Which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Read on. Behold, the Lord have the, a mighty and strong one. Uh huh. Which as a tempest which of hell. A what? As a tempest of hell. Read on. And a destroying storm. Uh huh. As a flood of mighty waters. Oh, that's Irma, all in Puerto Rico. Go ahead. As a flood of mighty waters uh -huh. overflowing uh -huh. shall cast down to the earth with the hand. You see that? That's what that's what came to Puerto Rico. It's coming visiting Benjamin. Here visiting Ephraim. Judah getting visited. Issachar getting visited. Simeon, I'm a, a Simeon uh, Levi. Reuben getting visited. By the most high through these natural disasters right now. All right? Psalms 107, 28 to 31. Con, Book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 28. Uh -huh. Then they cry unto the Most High in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distress. When you cry to the Most High, Yahweh in the Hebrew, Shem Yahweh was shy, he hears you and brings you out of distress. Read on. He maketh the storm a calm. He can calm the storm. Read on. So that the waves thereof are still. Read on. Then... Because they be quiet. Uh huh. So he bringeth them unto their desire haven. Uh huh. Go ahead. Oh, that men would praise Yahweh. You see that? Oh, if you would praise him. Panics that are being affected by Irma, that got affected by Harvey, got affected by this earthquake, getting ready to get affected by Jose. If you would simply praise the Most High and worship the Most High, all you would have to do was call upon him and the storm would be called. All you would have to do was call upon him and you would be all right. But you refuse to call upon him. So you're getting put through absolute hell right now. Down in them islands, in Mexico, in Texas, in Florida. You're getting put through pure hell. Why? Because you won't praise the most high. Read it again, 31 from the top. Con, 
Oh, that men would praise Yahweh. If you would only simply praise the Most High Yahweh. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. If you would simply praise him, you would be all right. The problem is our people do not want to praise him, do not know how to praise him. All right? So that's why they're going through this hell right now. Give me um, Isaiah 42 and 8. Con. Book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 8. Uh-huh. I am Yahweh, uh -huh. that is my name, Read. and my glory would I not give to another place to graven images. You see, so when you worship in graven images, it's impossible for you to be praising the Most High because he said he will not give his glory to graven images, right? What are all of our people into? What are they worshiping on these islands in Florida and Texas in Mexico, every damn where, in Guatemala, everywhere we at? We're worshiping graven images. The Most High does not give his praise to graven images. So it says if you would simply praise him, he would calm the storm for you. But because you're giving your praise to graven images, the storm isn't calm. And you're getting destroyed and devastated by these various natural disasters that the Most High is sending as a judgment and as a wake-up call to the Black, Hispanic, and Native Indian. And the fact that these death tolls are not climbing as high as they potentially could be shows you the Most High is just slapping you upside your damn head, Black, Hispanic, and Native Indian. But it's time. This word is going out throughout the world through this damn internet. It's going out throughout the world. Okay, I guarantee you, if when, if I go to our analytics right now, they're watching in, in all these places that are getting affected. Our videos. And if they're watching our videos, that means they're watching other camps. That means they're getting the truth. So why aren't these people that are watching these videos going out to the streets and warning them people and calling the children uh, of the Most High back to them? That's going to stop these hurricanes. Or let's say it don't stop these hurricanes. It's going to get you out of there, get all of us out of here. So we ain't got to worry about a damn hurricane, a typhoon, tornado, earthquake, any damn thing, a, f a forest fire, a flood, any of it. Officer, come. Right? Give me Luke 13. And read one to five in Luke. Come. Book of Luke, chapter 13. There were present at the season, Salat. There were present at that season uh -huh. some that told him of the Galileans' blood. Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. The white man had killed and 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 took the blood of of black men, Hebrew Israelite men, and mingled it with their uh, satanic sacrifices. Read, and they told Yahweh who the world calls Christ about this. Read, and Yahweh Shai answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans, of all the Galileans, uh -huh. because they suffered such things. Read. Really? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So suppose that them people down there in Hurricane Harvey were the worst Negroes and Latinos that ever lived. Suppose the ones that's getting affected by Irma right now in them islands. Suppose the Mexicans that got rocked with an 8.0 earthquake are the worst and the most wicked Israelites on earth. Newsflash, they're not. And if we don't do it, if you don't do it, if you don't repent, you're going to die worse than they die. You're going to fall victim to worse calamities than they fell to. If you don't repent. In the back, go ahead. Luke 13. Go ahead. Verse 4. Or those 18 whom the tower in Siloam, Siloam fell and slew them, think Think ye that ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. All these natural uh, disasters, these 20 people that they done got collected the death toll in the Caribbean and dropped dead. So you suppose that there was the worst Negroes out? Right, read. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. If we don't repent and come back to these law, statutes, and commandments, we're going to die worse deaths than we see in God throughout the world right now. All right. All right. And the worst death is going to be a thermonuclear holocaust. That's going to be a worse death. Officer. Go ahead, on Precept. Daniel chapter 3, uh, starting from 15. Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, 
Walmart and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour in the midst of a fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship thy golden image, which thou hast set up. So they still had enough faith to say, you know what, even if we even if we don't get rescued out of this fire and die in this fire, you know what I'm saying? But even if they don't get rescued, they still aren't going to worship. Well, that's their work. Yeah. <laughs> That's damn right. No matter what is going on, you got to keep that faith. That's what that's a whole story about. You got the beautiful story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going to the book of Daniel. And those brothers get delivered from a fiery furnace. Right? But then guess what? You also have the seven brothers in the Apocrypha. You also have Eleazar in 2 Maccabees, the sixth chapter. They didn't make it out. What's the moral of the story? Serve God, period. Do life or death. Be faithful when the death and you shall receive a crown of life as is written in the book of Revelation. All right? That goes between men's devices, pastors. All right? But don't be stupid, man. They telling you a damn earth devastating hurricane is coming. Get the hell out of town, man. All right? Try to get a little bit ahead of a curve before there's a 24-hour backup. On the damn freeway like it was going to georgia out of florida uh this week get the hell out of there all right go to what, what do they always say it's a storm seek high ground man hmm. seek high ground and i don't think they got a uh i don't know if they got many mountains out there in florida i don't i'm gonna say I, 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 I perceive it's all flatland so yeah, I'm in high ground is high ground is georgia I'm in Hey, well, you, you said what? Well, yeah, you see, you be all right back in Tennessee. Ain't, ain't, ain't no damn uh, ain't no uh, hurricane coming to Tennessee. You see what I'm saying? It, it probably will, but it'll probably be slowed down by then because that 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 area up there is not tropical, so it's just gonna be like a a just a bad storm. You see what I'm saying? If they see it, it always dies out with his son, which is why islands and coastal areas are so vulnerable. You see what I'm saying? Because the water is, is right there. That's yeah, that's why Houston was was so vulnerable. It's it's coastal. And it's I mean that that's what comes with the territory. When you deal with how a nation sets up its cities, its cities, the, the primary cities are always going to be coastal because of ports you have to import these are going to be the hubs where you can import things and export things so cities like houston cities like new orleans you understand what i'm saying cities like miami cities like uh new york are always going to be the hubs Shalom. always going to be the hubs why are they always going to be the hubs because these are port cities so these are cities that are pivotal in the the country and you know how the country operates if, if those ports are not there to be for goods to be imported and the rest of the city can't get, I mean, rest of the country can't get what it needs. You see what I'm saying? So, but you run that risk because now you can have a tsunami, you have a depression, a hurricane or whatever because of its proximity to the water, to the, you know, to the coast. But it's like Seattle. Just, Seattle's lucky because- Because it's on the sound. Yeah, we're on the sound. We're not, we're not actually on the ocean. Major import export. Yeah, that's why, that's why anybody like, um who knows, Toyota got a truck called a Tacoma. The reason why Toyota got a truck called a Tacoma is because Japan ships the majority of Toyota cars through the port of Tacoma. That's why they named it that. 
But like your brother said, we lucked out. Why? Because we're on the sound. We're not actually on the, the ocean. So because it's not on the ocean, you ain't got to worry about a the Puget Sound tsunami coming in to get you. You see what I'm saying? Because if y'all know how Washington looks, it's like, and then it dips out. Yeah, that dip out. That that's where Seattle and Tacoma's at versus like Ocean Shores. That's yeah. really on the ocean. You see what I'm saying? They might could get hit with a damn tsunami, but you know Tacoma, and Seattle wouldn't be affected by that. So it's that's why they build. Seattle was not built by a mistake. Where it's at, you see what I'm saying? They built that there because it was a great place to get you know to import and export you see what i'm saying you go just right in the pacific ocean you come right in that sound you come right down and this is a good hub city what's called the the, the south sound you know what i mean so you, you know you got port angeles you got all those various ports up there you know so th that's how they like to build cities but then you run that risk because it's on the water um but yeah that's it on that let's who got who got questions in the room questions in the room i i know you got a question Ari, I know you had a question earlier. The Nephilim. The Nephilim question. Go ahead. Because it doesn't affect the rest of the Bible. Um, to the Bible, why? Do you know why? Uh, you you got to fact check that, and I'm explain why. Because people are going around and taking pictures and saying these pictures are proof that there were giants, and then the actual college students who a part of their assignments was to create that image, to falsify that image. No, I made that for class. And you're now taking that and saying that they're discovering a giant fossil. This is why we have to be very careful about the information that we receive on the internet. Because, I mean, if we can't verify how we're just supposed to talk about it's true. Give me the scripture about prudence. Proverbs. The, the, the purpose, the reason why the Nephilim are not discussed later in the Bible is number one, because everybody except for eight people died that was on earth so even if let's say they were these great giant people they would have died you see what i'm saying they wouldn't exist no more anyway but the nephilim and the giant concept that you see with the nephilim is not actually being a giant goliath was actually a giant you have the anakims who else you have you have um which are the sons of anak which is hamites you had hamitic giants you have Moabite giants, all of it. Give me the y'all got the scriptures on that? All the giants. Just look, looked it up, especially the Hamites, Manu Bowl. You had giant, giant Hamites that existed, and you had giant gooks in the scriptures as well, like Yao Ming, right? Read that. Yeah, yeah, yeah bring that out. Uh, Proverbs chapter fourteen, verse fifteen. The simple believe in every word, uh -huh. but the prudent man look as well to his going. We have to look well to our goings through prudence. We have to be astute and wise about the information that we um, take in and put out. And we got to make sure that we fact check as much as possible. Because I've I seen it where the, where the kids was like, man, or not the kids, the college students, saying, I mean, I made this in graphic design class. And people are going around and saying that this is a real thing. You see what I'm saying? It's a total fabrication. So that's why we have to be careful about that. Was there giants, though, according to the scriptures? Yes. There were large people. And people, give me that in Ezra. You know what's that second Ezra? Yeah. You, you know what I need. Uh, oh, you got something? Yeah. Hold your point, officer. Go ahead. Uh, second Samuel 23 and 20. Uh-huh. There we go. And Benaiah, uh -huh. the son of Jehida, mm -hmm. the son of a valiant man who had done many acts 
he slew two lion-like men of Moab. Mm -hmm. He went down and also, he went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of the snow. That's not the one I want. It's it's talking about, just look up the word giants. Look up the word giants. You got it, you got it, Sarge? I'll look there we go, he got it right there. Do it around go ahead. But you got the, you, you know what I want? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna start up. See, it started with nine. And nine. Yeah. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 2, verse 9. Uh -huh. And the Most High said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, uh -huh. for I will not give thee of their land for possession, Read. because I have given our unto the children of Lot for possession. Uh -huh. Read. The, the Imams the Imams read on dwelt therein in times past in times past before he gave it to the Moabites it belonged to the Imams read on a people great and tall as the Anakim so you had the Imams but the Moabites destroyed the Imams so after the flood you had people who were giant in stature the Moabites destroyed the Imams who were giant people read on which also were counted giants. Uh huh. And the Anakims, which also were counted giants, which were a Hamitic group of giants. Read on. As the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Imams. Mm -hmm. Moabites, they had their own name. Go ahead for them. Yeah. Two eleven. Yeah, that was eleven. That was in eleven. That was. Oh, 11. So like it. Let me see. Okay, yeah, which the horns were not giants. Those were the Horites. But as you can see, there was giants, but the giants were going to war with other people, and they were losing. They was getting killed. You see what I'm saying? But there's still remnants of giant people. Do we see large? You had some officer. You, you were saying that the MMs first, and then the Anakim. I mean, the MMs first, and then the, the Moabites came in, and then the Moabites called, called the Anakim uh, MM as well, mm -hmm. based off of knowing what they was, you know what I'm saying? They was exactly, exactly, because they were still, because they were trying to look at these huge people, they call them, that's the MM. Yeah, I'm going to call you what I want to call you, which people do, you see what I'm saying? Right, go ahead. Yeah, Second Ezra chapter 5, 51. Uh -huh. He answered me and said, ask a woman that bear children, and she shall tell thee. Say unto her, Wherefore are not they whom thou hast now brought forth like those that were before, but less of stature? Ooh, but less of stature. You see that? Meaning since the time, since back then, people are smaller than they were in the ancient times in general. So what we're thinking as a giant now, if we look at a man that's seven, four, seven, five, seven, six, tall like some of these damn Hamites, right? You looking at that like that's a giant. That wasn't a giant in the ancient times. Yeah. All right, that might have been the average size brother, right? The giant would be a brother nine feet, ten feet tall. You see what I'm saying? But but people are smaller in stature. Creation is smaller in stature now. Go because ahead. The, the the whole world is dying off for all the men. That's why we got to renew it. A lot of dudes that's that tall are sick. They got like sick as hell. You're dying. Like uh, who knows about the famous Andre the Giant? His his organs couldn't support him. He was so damn big. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, the stilts. You see what I'm saying? Walking around like that because he's not. It's it's not even natural. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cannibalistic. Uh, it don't talk about that in Genesis. We we gonna we gonna go right over in a second because Jude is not talking about what Genesis is talking about. Jude is talking about something different. The angels that kept not their first estate. That's talking yeah. about something separate. Let me, let me finish what's going on. Finish that. Boom. Um, verse 53. It says, uh, so the angel is telling Ezra to go ask a woman why she's not producing giants anymore, basically. Verse 53. And she shall answer thee, they that be born in strength of youth are of one fashion, and they that are born in the time of age when the womb filleth are otherwise. So when the earth was younger, 
the things that the earth had on it were larger. Right? Go ahead. Even the vegetation. Yeah. Come on. Now you ain't seen it. They used to have to, two men used to have to carry a cluster of grapes. Carry a cluster of grapes. Come on. That tells you what you need to know. People used to live in, according to the book of Genesis, 900 plus years. Mm -hmm. Ain't making it to 90. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Verse 54. Consider thou therefore also how that ye are less of stature than those that were before we're, you. We're smaller than the people that preceded us. Read on. And so are they that come after you. And people that's coming after us. I remember, I remember I used to look at that in school. <clears throat> I used to look at the kids that was a grade above me and say, man, they're so much bigger than us. But they were in this grade last year. Why are they so much bigger than us? Right? Go ahead. And they that were before you, and, and so are they that come after you less than ye, as the creatures which now begin to be old and have passed over the strength of youth. So it's right there in the scripture. Which which you got? Yeah, precept. Go ahead, Sergeant. Oh, yeah. uh, it's book of Numbers, chapter 13. And start at uh verse 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And, verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. Which are um, the Anakims. Right. The Anak, you know, the sons of Anak. Go ahead. Which come of the giants. And we were and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Yeah, so these and these Hamites was gigantic in stature, right? That made people feel small. Was that? Yeah, was it uh, <clears throat> the Hebrew understanding of, of Nephilim is just a tyrant? The word Nephilim in Hebrew means fall. An apostate. That's what it means when you look it up. So I, mean, I, mean, I mean the giant. Yeah. No, that's what the that's what the word is meaning apostate all right the word apostate who knows what the word apostate means no that's prostate prostate uh <laughs> apostate who knows what that is apostate is somebody who it, it's it's a synonym to a heretic okay it's a similar to somebody who has rejected the doctrine so when you read about the nephilim when you read about the sons of god dealing with the children of the daughters of man you are dealing with brothers who are of the chosen lineage at the time the equivalent to the israelites before the flood going and dealing with heathen women right and they created this so they're nephilims because they fell away and they rejected their their culture and they went and started getting with the other you see it every day which we still say we fall out we call it fall yeah right? so. you're the fall out which is an apostate but this brother was just telling me about some brothers that moved their ass to japan just to get with asian women. What's that? all right i want to make sure i throw that jam over there mm -hmm. benjamites that then moved to japan just to get with an asian woman that's an apostate but he has kids that are what giants men of renown what does that mean they're still the children of god though they have a, a, a mother of man they're still an israelite they're still chosen and they're still great even though they've been planted in strange soil all right how do we see this brother you know where i'm going <laughs> blake griffin a tremendous example of a nephilim we got a biracial angel right here is a knock <coughs> Derek, hey, Derek Jeter. You see what I'm saying? You have all these brothers. They have heathen mothers, but they're still giants and men of renown because they're still the children and the chosen of God. That's what was going on before the flood. What was going on before the flood is what's going on. You can understand. Every there's no new thing under the sun, as it's written in the book of Ecclesiastes. So what we see going on now is what's going on then. Brother trying to get him a white girl now. He's trying to get him a white girl then. All right? They're dealing with the daughters of Cain. All right? It ain't no no new thing that's going on. Or chasing all the other nations. All right? And having babies. And these babies are Israelites. 
or the equivalent to what Israelites would have been, which are Adamites. All right? Plain and simple. All right? What, do you have some? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, any other questions in the room? Go ahead. Go ahead. Come, come. Yeah, because there's various things, and then you deal with these other these other works that try to accredit themselves as 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 being a part of the scriptures, i.e., um, the Book of Enoch. Sure it speaks about I don't I don't I'm not sure what's in the book of Jasher right there. But I know the book of Enoch speaks in depth about these giants and you know all of these various things. Um it's it's a good movie plot, you see what I'm saying? But it's not what well, when we actually weigh it against the scriptures, we're not seeing it because we're seeing these words being used for not that. You understand what I'm saying? And then the the, the concept that an angel could rebel against the most high grow a penis and have sex with a woman and then a regular sized woman is producing a, a giant this whole thing is not adding up you see what i'm saying it just don't add up as far as what the scriptures is talking about so we have to take another look at what's going on we have to study the hebrew and what's going on and then we see that this word simply means an apostate somebody who falls away you see what i'm saying so when you got these guys that's falling away just like Adam slipped up and fell away, but he got back to it. You see what I'm saying? But some of his descendants, what did they do? They fell all the way away. If you read in the book of Genesis, you got Adam begets Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel, or Abel dies, Cain runs away. So a new seed is raised up to Adam. That seed is who? Seth. He has Seth. Then you have a line that goes from Seth down to Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. They was having other kids of the line of Adam from there. But the direct line that was getting dealt with from the Most High was only referenced in the book of Genesis. These other kids that are there, their theology is not reckoned. So some of those children and some of those other people that sprung from Adam were being apostates and falling away. Reason exact why they were left out from when that flood came, they didn't get to get on the boat. Only no one his sons did because they were the only ones that were being righteous. Yeah, let me, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Let me bring this out real quick. Uh, book of Sirach, great book. Uh, Sirach chapter 16, uh, verse 6. And the congregation of the ungodly shall a fire be kindled, and in a rebellious nation, wrath is set on fire. He was not pacified toward the old giants who fell away in strength of their foolishness. I'm telling you that we fell away from our foolishness. We, the, the giant has just fallen from the doctrine, fallen from uh, our position as being the chosen. Yeah, because the word giant in Hebrew also, it means a man of renown. When it says a man of great stature, like when we're reading about the Anakims and it says they're a man of great stature, them niggas is huge. You see what I'm saying? Well, you could also be a man of great stature, just you have renown. You are man. honorable. You are you see what I'm saying? You have a reputation. That's your stature in that aspect. The water. That's your stature in that aspect. So it doesn't just mean somebody who literally has this great physical stature, right? But you're shy. The bully and the tyrant? In the blue letter, it's got it's got tyrant on there as well. <laughs> Felon? Feller. Oh, feller. <laughs> yeah, I mean that makes sense as well. They were probably very tyrannical. They were probably bullying people. There's some nigga, you know, with a with a white woman at home, an Asian woman at home, who looking at you like you ain't shit. That's all that. That's all he was. You see what I'm saying? But he was still great in, in the abilities and the blessings that he was given by the most highs, huh? Like on Tuesday. Like that nigga on Tuesday. Right? <laughs> now I'm sure he has, I'm sure that brother has some type of skill. Something that he could just do so great. He's still a you know what I mean? He could or he could have a kid and that kid could jump out the damn gym. 
right? But, you know, he's a Nephilim, you know, his father, you know, a Negro that fell. Um, Get you. It's short, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't bring it up and bring it up because the situation is like Come. Let's, let's go over Jew real quick. Do we need the renown mentoring? Yeah, read that. Matter of fact, read that first. So like, we're going to read this one first. We're going to go right to Jew. You're going back on the renown, man. Book, uh, Book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, start at verse 1. Because mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're giants. That's right. Uh, let us now praise famous men mm -hmm. and our fathers that begat us. Mm -hmm. The Lord have wrought gl great glory by them through his great power from the beginning, such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power. See that? That's a giant, a man renowned for his power. That's what was said to be about all of our patriarchs. We don't giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. You see that read leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people as their instructions. A slot wise and eloquent are their instructions, such as found out musical tunes <laughs> and recited verses in writing. <laughs> Rich men furnished with ability, as they, uh, like you said, the ability, Come. living peacefully in their habitations. All these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their time. You see that? So that's what the giants were in times of old. Just brothers who were great. You see what I'm saying? That's essentially what it means. Had to You're right. Yeah, they had power, right? You got Jude? Go ahead. Go over the, 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 the main points. Uh, Jude. Verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Okay, so what is the context here? Right, watch. Read the verse before. You got to understand what Jude is talking about. Who is Jude for the record? Trivia. Brother of. Who is James, the brother of? Who? We, this Jude, this is Jehoshaphat's brother now. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's talk. Go ahead. Verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance. So I'm, I want you to remember something. This is what he's talking about. What? Yo, you once knew this. Uh huh. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, he saved us out of Egypt. I want you to remember this. I, the Lord saved you out of Egypt, read. Afterward, destroyed them that believed not. But those that murmured, belief, were destroyed. Watch this. Go ahead. That's the subject matter right now. Read. And the angels which kept not their first estate. He's talking about those that did not believe. The angels that did not keep their first estate. Read on. What's your first estate? The law. That's your first estate. We were given what? The law, statutes, and commandments to follow. We didn't stay there. We left our first estate. So what happens? Read on. But left their own habitation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it fell, right? He has reserved an everlasting chain. Lamentations two and one. Left our own habitation, like the brother said. Fell. Lamentations two and one. Come. Book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. How have the Lord covered the daughter of Zion uh -huh. with the cloud in his anger? Read. And cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. So it said we fell. He cast us down. That's us falling out of heaven. Does that mean we literally fell out of heaven? No. That's just talking about us falling out of grace, us being taken out of power. Because why? Because we left our first estate. Because we turned our back on the Most High. 
also shows you too that uh, there were two thirds because this said every. Hold on, I'm gonna read it. It said uh, he had reserve up oh, a lot, but left their their own habitation. He had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah in the cities about them, in like manner. Uh, let me let me get this this uh, this word real quick for for chains, so we can prove what that is. It's crazy. Look at look at look at first it said arch like arch type. Yeah, arch type first. Chains. The Greek word desmos. Desmos. <laughs> it says uh um figuratively figuratively an impediment or disability. Uh, bond, band, string, chain, ligament of the body or shackle of a prisoner dealing with the everlasting chains are these bodies that way. And that's also how ligament, we fell. Ligament of a body. We fell from a glory. Not only did we fall from the law and truth, but we fell from our glorified bodies to these everlasting chains, which are yeah. the bodies we have now. Which are weak, which decay. Get it prone to disease. You understand what I'm saying? All of those various things. That's our chain. To worry about arthritis. Adam didn't have to worry about diabetes. You see what I'm saying? That's why part of the curses is what that we would get spent with the botch. Mm -hmm. That we would have we would have an inflammation. Hemros. That's all a part of all of, of the curses. Meaning what? We didn't have that. We didn't get those. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it says it says uh. Left your and left their their own habitation. That was the, the habitation is the glorified body. That's why it says habitation house. What's your house? The time the scripture speak about earthly your, tabernacles. Your abode, right? Mm -hmm. So it says, uh, and ha he had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. And going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, one may say, "Well, that was the angels going after the flesh of the, of, of the, uh, the humanity or the women of the earth." But when you look at the strange flesh, it's it's dealing with uh, uh, being a homo. <laughs> they, but that's why it says Sodom and Gomorrah. Hey, being a mo. A mo <laughs> you you wanting you wanting excuse my language, you wanting a man's ass huh. is strange flesh. The strange as hell. Right? Uh, that's why the context is Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm gonna I'm tell you how damn strange it is, man. All right, I <laughs> I get on this damn phone, go to you know, you know, you just innocently open up the Instagram, you hit the to hit the uh, magnifying glass, you know, you're trying to look for somebody, and all of a sudden you see all these women. Or just on accident, you know, you stumble upon them, mm -hmm. and you mean to tell me you want a man? You're that's strange. That's beyond my comprehension. That's strange as hell to me. You see what I'm saying? So that's the strange flesh that you're going out to obviously. And I don't go with uh, Romans one. Exactly. Beautiful precept with that to substantiate what that's talking about. Strange flesh. If it if it contextualizes Sodom and Gomorrah, we know in Sodom and Gomorrah they were homosexuals. So we know that that's the, that's what strange it's qualifying. That's what strange flesh is before somebody tries to go see that was the flesh of angels and the flesh of man. Whatever. What are you talking about? First off, they didn't know them three men was angels. <laughs> they thought that was men. These are men that we want to know. They said, where are those three men? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Not these angelic. First off, who's going to try to rape? Who's going to try to rape an angel in the first place? Why, why would somebody do that? You, you see what I'm saying? That have been number one. It says a, an angel is terrible when you see it, and you know it's an angel. You see what I'm saying? So you're gonna be afraid of. Him. You ain't gonna be thinking you gonna gang rape it now. And look, and look, and here's what proves it. Here's what proves it. The word here is not the word strange. It's other. So it's other, saying other going bro. after other flesh other than what? The women. flesh you're supposed to, yeah, other than women, which is a strange thing in the earth. To not want one of these fine ass ones. <laughs>
Okay. It says, uh, That's right. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. That's right. They filthy. They dreaming in their mind. All kind of madness, man. Go ahead. Uh, despise <laughs> dominion and speak evil of dignity. You see, they despise the men. They despise Yahawashai, who starts the dominion under the Most High. And they speak evil of the dignity or what's dignified, who are the dignitaries, who are of the body of the Most High, or the body of Yahawashai, rather, that the Most High is setting up in the spirit. That's what they speak speaking evil against. We got to, I'm going to say we have a breakdown on that. But the dignities are, you know, the various camps that get set up to preach the word. Some people speak evil of that right now. You see all these people coming against all oh, the camp this, the camps that, all this madness. They spoken about right here in Jude. Okay, Them niggas is off, officer. So I've been in camp for years. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I just don't understand, like, I, don't, it's like, I just couldn't find myself uh, following after somebody. Like, why does Israel need a leader? I said, we need a leader. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've always had a leader. Had what leader. nation doesn't have a leader? What nation doesn't have leadership? Name me one group of people. See, but a nigga don't want a leader. You see what I'm saying? A nigga just, yeah. You, you ask for, listen, and people don't realize you asked the most high not to be a leader. You don't, people don't realize that. They went to Samuel and said, give us a king like the rest of you. The most high said, all right. Even though it hurt him. <laughs> Even though it hurt him, he gave you what you wanted. Officer Bazaar. I have two points. Go ahead, Bazaar. Uh, Verse seven, uh, dealing with the vengeance of eternal fire. Does that go right back that's to verse? Uh, that's, oh, you slack it. That is verse seven. Yeah, uh, that goes right back to you know how Solomon more burned. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and liken it unto what's going to happen to America. Con, con. And part two, um, Deuteronomy seventeen and seventeen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, fifteen. Deuteronomy seventeen, fifteen. When you ask for a king, you know this what is what you do. It's in the law. <laughs> And, 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 and Moses and Moses set up what? Seventy elders. Then he set up captains and officers in all of thy gates. So now we don't have captains and officers in our gates. No, I'm going to tell you why a nigga don't want to be in a camp. He wants to continue smoking weed. Oh, he's see. Ain't, it, it, it's the craziest thing because the guys who have the most to say about you. Are horrible. It's not even something secret either. Like the nigga smoked, he goes, yeah, man, the camps is crazy. Oh, <laughs> man, it's camp. Niggas in a camp. I'm going to tell you what you will never do in this camp. Nigga is smoke a cigarette. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> hey, I, so, hey, come on. Now. Where, give me the scripture on a cigarette. <laughs> I'm told only to go to a Christian church where the pastor allegedly knows the truth. This is great. No, listen, I'm gonna tell you this. Seventy-five percent of pastors, Christian pastors, know the truth. <laughs> the congregation to tell you, oh, no, my pastor know that. I, we talked about it. Do we talk about it in church? No, nah, I don't ever bring that church. But I know the pastor. I've been knowing him all my life. He knows the truth. He knows about. It. He knows we Israelites. Remember on Easter. We went up to the dude. Maybe this was like four, hey, bro, four, five, and he looked at us and said, <laughs> yeah, Easter's." Hey, he said, "He said they don't want to." He said, "We're not even doing this. Ain't even Easter service." He said, "Look at the banner. It say it say Resurrection Day. It ain't even doing Easter." But his congregation people are so dumb they came dressed and ready for Easter, honoring Easter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they was coming in all the Easter colors, and he said, "Yeah, this is res Resurrection Day." <laughs> but go ahead. Oh, Nibiru, Planet Nibiru. Mm -hmm. No, he's he's back after the eclipse. Nibiru's back, baby. 
<laughs> Planet Nibiru is back in full effect right now. A brother came. I'm gonna tell you what's what's so crazy. A brother came on a comment board. And he said, man, what's up with this CERN? He started going in. This CERN is wicked, evil organization. They're trying to rebirth Osiris. I came. I said, I, I said, number one, brother, CERN ain't trying to do nothing but compete with Russia and North Korea. Two, Osiris was never real. So how are you going to rebirth him? And he said, hey, I, some white lady just came. Home to <laughs> and told me all this shit at the line in the grocery store, man. <laughs> I said, man, listen. That's the type of stuff I'm talking about. Who comes up with this stuff? I mean, I, but see, this, but here's the thing. If I was on drugs, I would love to hear that breakdown. I'll get down. I'll teach that breakdown. You know what I'm saying? As weak as we you go. They try, hold on, they trying to. Sir, they trying to pull Cyrus, man. Hey, man, give it, brother. They trying to bring back the comedic gods, man. <laughs> it's all mythos. That's all. <laughs> hey, brother, it was his car, right? right? Yeah. It's a car. This brother, you was passing him a flyer or something? No, we was there refunded before we went to Chicago Park. Oh, the, the, on Sunday. And I had, I had my um, the white man's devil shirt on. Come on, come on, come on. Like, hey, hey. Devil. He's not our enemy. Like, I said, the lynch. You see that? I wonder how much, oh, how type of drugs that brother he is on. He pulled out a book and said that the, the, the Dead Sea was on this side, but it was also on this side. <laughs> that man don't watch the Da Vinci Code, <laughs> Angels and Damn Demons, mm -hmm. all of them. Tom Hanks, third one is yeah, Inferno. the Inferno. Dante, Dante's Inferno. He even watched that uh, Jim Carrey one. Was it the number like some? The number twenty-three. The number twenty-three. <laughs> the number, 23. <laughs> number twenty-three. I mean, the nigga was going just. The nigga was just bugged out. They did a whole. What is it? They did a whole movie on Jordan. How great Jordan was, and the, and the great conspiracy to how Mike was so great. Uh, people are just crazy. People are just insane. They're filthy dreamers. And the brother was just reading about these filthy dreamers that come up with all these mad theories but won't deal precept and precept in the scriptures, aren't doing anything sound, are following the laws. And at the end of the day, crazy bugged out ideas have always existed and superstitions have always existed in blacks and Hispanic native Indian communities. They ain't helped us. So we got to get rid of that and just get with the practicality. Of what's in the pages, brother. It's, it's crazy because you know Yahweh Shai trying to keep it so simple. It's it's very like, simple. It's like give me, just give me what I need to do, and he said, "All right, you know, love God and love, love your brother." You know what I'm saying? With all your heart and all your mind and your soul, and give him two two things to do. You say, "Which is coming?" You know, the rest of the law. So That's right. They, silos, they rather deal with Hebrew. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Deal with Stern, trying to figure out how to how to split uh the atom. Is this how to split the atom? But I'm gonna tell you what's so crazy. <laughs> Yahweh I also said, if I would have went to Tyree and Zidon, repented, you go and you give all these quote unquote Abrahamic religions to the Hamites, to the Ishmaelites, to some damn gook somewhere in Korea. In Korea. And you know what they do? They eat it up, and especially the Hamite. The Hamite get Islam, um, the best Islam Muslim you've ever seen. Expert, he realizes, you know what? I was doing all this madness in Egypt down with Islam. This is going to give me some structure to my life. You understand what I'm saying? They get down with Christianity. This is going to give me something. The Israelite man does not want to look at the structure and the practicality. Brother Asar that come through sometimes, he had called me over his job. He do security. And there was a, 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 a Hamite, a, a, a Mizramite, a real Egyptian. That uh, that was doing security there as well, and he said, "What we do is we get this from the Bible." He said, "We take ten percent of our check and we send it back home every time we get paid." See, they looked at the Bible and they said, "These people are smart. The information that they put in the Bible, and let's use it to our advantage." 
we look at the Bible and we say, <laughs> the bottomless pit CERN is gonna come. You see what I'm saying? That's what a Negro do. No, it can't. It can never be that simple. No, brother. I saw the vision. Osiris <laughs> is gonna come out, and it's gonna be the Antichrist. That's what a Negro do, and the white man do it too. Let's not. But actually, some of them don't. They're called Amalek. They call themselves the Jewish man. They took in your culture, and they know exactly what to do with it, which is to make themselves rich. You see what I'm saying? Meanwhile, you want to smoke a blunt and open this thing and go, oh, my God, I cracked the Da Vinci code. You know, you know, what, it is? You know what it is? Where it has thou loved us. Yeah. The way that you've loved me is you've given me the ultimate book. See, because God loves me. That's how much he's dealing with me. <laughs> because I'd see it. He's I see it. it to me. You, you don't see it because yeah. he don't love you as much. That's right. He <laughs> loves you, but not as much <laughs> as he loves love me. me. You see what I'm saying? You had some officer. Yeah. Can't even come. <laughs> Hold on, Ham, that, that don't mean Ham slept with Noah's woman, popped his mama. All right, we, we gotta understand the implication there. Noah didn't just have some woman, that's Ham's mom. <laughs> now, I'll put a lot of charges on Ham, Mike, man. All right, I don't know if I'm going that far. All right, you know, actually, the Egyptians, I'll put it on they discussing that. Spazak, you have something? In, 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 you said, like, said brothers make statements and then don't really like they don't think about the, all the implications if i say this how many times in the bible i'm gonna get cut you see what i'm saying like when somebody say god loves everybody and they go to john 316 but we could cut it they don't really they just go out on a, like this idiot that that, <laughs> that walked by camp on on tuesday this numb skull gonna say you're preaching hate i says they're hating the bible yes but god doesn't hate okay cool Brother Resaw five and five. This nigga gonna say, as soon as it goes, for, thou has hated. He says, he hates the sin, not the sinner. I said, just wait. All right. It says he hates the sinner, not the sin. Then he says, you're ignorant. <laughs> God, that was just great. You realize you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You say there's not hate, or you say there is hate, but it's not from God. We show it's hate from God. You say it's not the sin, but the sinner. You've heard these things, but you don't realize when you say these things, we're going to go right into the Bible and prove what? You don't know what you're talking about. You have no idea you're lost, Frank. Uh, yeah, just to go off of that, uh, they just uh, paint themselves into a smaller and smaller box, and then they just, you know, they just keep running until that box gets tiny, and they're like, oh, Yeah, just, now God does hate. I just said God doesn't hate. Now he does hate, but he hates what you do. He doesn't hate you. Then when he hates you, you're ignorant, man. <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. Time for a nigga moment. That's about to be a nigga. <laughs> you, hey, you're ignorant, man. You, you, you're ign That's not of God. It don't matter how many scriptures you go to. No matter, you can read a whole chapter to him. You're ignorant. You don't. You don't. You have no idea. That's 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 out of context. Most eyes put their mind to sleep. It's like the book might as well be closed. Yeah, it, I'm. I, I had a dream about this a couple years ago. Like it was like a martial law setting and you had brothers that was like in this high school gym where it was like an evacuation center and they literally start holding camp. I'm watching this. I'm not even in the camp. I'm watching the camp. Like they're, they're speaking. They're, they're, they're holding a the camp and people are gathering around and I understood what they're saying, but then I, I'm, I'm looking at it from the outside looking in and they literally were speaking another language and looking at these people like, and everybody's looking like, we don't know what the hell you're talking about. You see what I'm saying? Because when we're out there, it's like we're literally speaking another language. You see what I'm saying? They really, could, because like you said, the Most High got their mind in a deep sleep. They're not, the Most High got to put the spirit on your mind to be open up to the truth. That's why, because it's so sensible, everybody should get it. You see what I'm saying? So if you're not getting it, it's because there's a block on your damn mind. Right. That's the only reason. He's not the author of confusion. He's not confusing anybody. Either he's shutting somebody off. Or we turn somebody on to it. Coming to the truth, breaking the history of the world down top to bottom to people. And people going, cool. Yeah, I, you know what? You know what? All of it makes sense. I can't dispute any of it. But for some reason, I just can't get down with it. 
All of it makes sense. None of it can be disputed. But you know what? I'm just going to not get follow that's this. What, uh, that's what, uh, um, I forget. I don't think he caught his name, but he was, uh, <coughs> he was the brother that, uh, that we stopped. Uh, what was that Highland? Or not Highlands, uh, where we hold camp. University. University. And, yeah. And With the glasses, like, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, and all of it makes sense. I can't yeah. dispute it. I'm just, I just yeah, can't yeah, do that's it. Like verbatim we said. I like it. It's good. That's called a mental block on a Marzan. You have something? Go ahead. You got your precept? Hold yeah. that. Go ahead. I believe in science. I believe in science. That's a that's a great thing to tell somebody. They, they believe in science. Nigga don't even know what science actually I is. I believe in evolution. Well, what is evolution? Well, we come from monkeys. <laughs> no, your ancestor is a fish. Go ahead. Right, like you said, we break it down. We break it down so clear to brothers. Like the one with the brother saying about the hate. You show him hates in the Bible. Then you show him he hates actual sinners, and he just didn't, he couldn't see. It was like he was actually blind. Uh, You're ignorant. Precept. Now I don't know. Go ahead. But Book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have attained the it. The elect. A chosen group of Israel is going to obtain it. The rest were blinded. The two-thirds is going to be blinded. 66.6% .6 is just literally blinded, meaning they're just not going to be able to get down with it. Why? Because they wasn't a part of the chosen of the chosen they're not the cream of the crop that's right that's right of the nation and that's just what it boiled down to god Ari. Uh, greek, That's right. That's right. And the ones who the Lord open up the hearts and minds are the ones who look in the grave and try to gain from this thing. Nobody, when somebody reads this, they, they don't understand it. And so it's, it's good that somebody can break it down to them, give them that full understanding, and put food that do, even when you break it down to them, they still don't give it to their heart, one of their hardy hearts, or whatever, they still deny it. They, they, they go just to bring it. Yeah, well, they, they've been blinded. That's why. But like like you said, going into them two precepts, pastors that purposely feed the flock BS and lead the flock astray, then the Most High said to answer those pastors, I'm going to give pastors according to my own heart. So teach the scriptures as they're supposed to be taught appropriately, then we understand that what we're doing is being the pastors of the Lord's own heart not you see what i'm saying that are in these churches that are misleading folks and whatnot yeah it was it was supposed to go to levi but even before levi that's the thing that um paul breaks down in, in the book of hebrews even before the levites levi paid tithe in, in abraham to melchizedek so the melchizedek priesthood is really the, the prototype for 
a tithing system. You see what I'm saying? So all of Israel, all 12 tribes are part of the Melchizedekite priesthood. So anybody um, could technically receive, any tribe at this point could, could technically receive percent officer. And that's why it goes into, um, uh, that's why alms, uh, uh, and, 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 uh, forgiveness and such and such. That's right. That's right. As on. Considered priests. Exactly. That's why we're a nation of kings and priests. Because the um I, Paul Paul went through a whole thing. If you go to Second Corinthians nine, where he's cursing the church of Corinth out, saying, I could have robbed you righteously. I could have had a <laughs> a God sanctioned robbery, y'all. All this work I do, I'm writing these long ass letters and laboring and setting your school up, right? Which y'all niggas don't want to give me anything. But it's okay because this these other brothers already furnished me with what I need, already provided for me what I need, right? So Paul was not a Levite, of course. Paul was a Benjamin. That's cool. A lot of people go to Hebrews 7 to 14 to point out the fact that Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Christ, was from the tribe of Judah. But if we follow the full context of what's being said, I mean, that's good for that as well. But when we follow the full context of what's being said, Paul is elaborating on the Melchizedekite priesthood and how not of Levi was still worthy and was still setting up a, a priesthood that encompassed all 12 tribes. Sergeant. Yeah, no, I was just going to add on to it. The priesthood the brother brought out and what you were saying, you got some pastors that lead the uh, flock astray, right? And then you got some, uh, you got some brothers that just teach the truth, right? Also too, on the other end, you got people, like it says in Isaiah 39, you got rebellious people. It says like, you know, children that won't hear the law, they, they say to the pastors, right, and the seers, you know, preach to us smooth things, prophesy smooth things, because they don't want to hear this truth. So sometimes, and then you got brothers like us that bring out the truth. So some people, they hear it, right? They want the smooth things, so they get mad, they get upset, like what we saw on Tuesday, when they hear the truth come out. Huh. So, you know, you got, you got on both spectrums, you know, you got, you know, you got the same thing on both spectrums. <laughs> You are right. That that's dealing with the that's a curse on the Levitical priest. That's what that's that's on the tribe of Levi. About all the way up until it starts talking about Judah, which is about the tenth, I believe the tenth verse. So that's a that's a that's a judgment on Levi that's being pronounced by uh, Malachi Bazar That's why if you go further up into the into that chapter, probably verse two or three, where it talks about uh, and I have already done this. You know what I'm saying? He did it ahead of time. When they, when they, when, when old boy in the Olympics, you know, fell before he even got to the hurdle. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was laughing, but but chief was like, "Hey man, hey, this was destined." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he can't. We he, spread that dung where, like, where the great Haitian gold medal is at? <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> Not for like a trade. He might could have won. You know what? He, but he failed before. The, right off the gate. You see what I'm saying? That's called a judgment from God. That's what people don't realize. That's how we people want to say. I've asked well, the chart. The chart. I mean, I, I, what the hell is wrong with you? See it. You got to be an idiot. You see right. what I'm saying? It's it's very clear what's going on if you take a look at all the spiritual mm -hmm. traits that each of these tribes have. Mm -hmm. More so than anything, it's about the spiritual traits mm -hmm. and the spiritual characteristics that all the tribes have. It says that we have laden with diverse fruits. Mm -hmm meaning each of the 12 tribes are distinguishable by their the fruits of their spirit. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, it's what's that bar you told me earlier? About the gun, about the, the Desert Eagle. Oh, yeah, the yeah, some battle rapper. He said something like, I don't know if y'all seen on Facebook. He said, look, 
He said, I got a 45 Desert Eagle. He's like, it's African American. I can't get it to work for nothing. He said, but the 40 is Mexican. I'll get it to work for nothing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> call it a stereotype, call it what you want, but you know, Royal, the, the Royal Judite, the, the, you know what I mean? And then you got Issachar, you know, he is hired. Tribute. Right? People talk about, oh, that's a stereotype. He is higher. It's not just that his name is he is higher. It's that he said he would be a servant. He bowed his knee to bear and became a servant of the tribute. Right. You see what yeah, I'm saying? That's that's not, <laughs> you know, anything. That's not a stereotype. This is a fact. And Donald Trump is raising and getting all white people to get behind him based off of this fact. I was on. Yeah, I was like, no. They got that dude uh, in the studio, and he's in the Mexican suit, and he's right next to the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on. put it in your face because all them assholes is Jewish, so they yeah. know. They, they know. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> they, they know. Yeah, what I see, uh, uh, Marlon Wayne, he got that one. Oh, it's called Haunted House Two or whatever. Yeah, remember his neighbor, the Ishkarite, he's mowing the grass, whatever. Mm -hmm. Hey man, you just do my uh, yard name. and what makes you think this is what I do? Yeah, I do. I, I do, do this actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, too, didn't you have that quote? Some some art right? She was a writer. Yeah, yeah. The sister. I just I just did, did the video on it. What she said. The Haitians are um. She said Haitians are um, kind and gentle people beside the fact that we're uh, unconsciously cruel. All right? That's called a spiritual trait. They say instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. They have a fierce anger. So our unconscious cruelty is a part of our spiritual traits and characteristics to where we don't even just cruel. That means you don't realize how cruel and mean you're being. You understand what I'm saying? You got to, you know, anybody who <laughs> knows a Levite could attest to this, I'm sure. So, every, all the 12 tribes have a spiritual characteristic and trait that is easily identifiable that bears witness to how authentic and how true in the spirit and inspired the 12 tribes are. That's right. Right? Period. So, if you don't want to, if you want to complicate the situation, whatever. But facts are facts. All right? Spiritual facts are spiritual. Spiritual facts. Come on. From what they like to do <laughs> to what they like to eat to where they like to go to how they work. That's right. And it goes. It goes for our tribes. It goes for our nation, and it goes for other nations. You see, Every, people are stupid. And we know the traits of everybody. We <laughs> read hey, spirits. we read spirits up here. <laughs> got brothers up here. We read spirits. All right, <laughs> but. Uh, but with that, we're going to give all praise on our glory to you. How about you? How about you? And say shalom. Shalom.